I'm not sure how many people in the audience knows what uh, legatum means. When I first discovered that word, I was doing a lecture in Dubai, and it, to me it sounded like something out of Harry Potter. But uh, legatum means legacy. And what I hope to do in the next 11 minutes is to try and persuade you to make a difference. Um, I just want to show you my office, because I've been here in, uh, near this town for six days in a lovely place called Savata, in six days of solid meetings, so it's lovely to come here. But uh, in 48 hours, I'll be back in my office, and I uh, just wanted to show you my office here. Located among the great dunes of the Sharkir Sands, the spectacular new outward-bound desert centre provides an ideal base for expeditions and study in a challenging environment. Purpose-built on a carefully selected 5,000 square metre site, the centre has been designed to blend in with the landscape. With the nearest power supply 2 kilometers away and the nearest blacktop road 12 kilometers away, it is Oman's first building designed to be powered by renewable energy. All water, which has to be brought in by tanker, is treated and reused on site. And at that point I'm going to pause because last night it rained and that's the first rain I've heard for eight months. It doesn't rain very much in Oman where I live, so it was all very exciting. But uh, when I spoke to people about this TED talk here in Romania, they said, what's the theme? I said, future unchained. And I said, what does that mean to you? And they said, well, future, you're talking about young people. Unchained means you're talking about technology. But I would argue that whilst technology is important, the future, like, my, like your last speaker, the future revolves around people. My job is training young people in Oman for jobs that do not yet exist. The fourth industrial revolution, artificial intelligence. What skills do you need to be a successful citizen in the future? But do you know the best thing about my office in the desert is that there is no mobile phone reception. And it is fantastic. And it means that people have to communicate. It is wonderful. We don't have monologue, we have dialogue. And that's absolutely brilliant. I think if you're looking to the future, like you're driving a car, sometimes when you're driving a car, it's good to look what's behind you in the rear view mirror. And I'm a great believer in learning lessons from history. And one of the most inspiring people I know is this man here, T.E. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia, like me, another eccentric Englishman, but he did some extraordinary things and his book, The Seven Pillars of Wisdom, very quickly became the book that US soldiers were reading in the invasion of Iraq because they realized the war would not be won with technology. The war would be won by understanding people because the people in the Arab world, the culture is totally different. It's family first, tribe second, individual last, and people from the West did not understand that. So things from the past can really influence what we do today. It certainly influenced something that I did. This, I believe, is the oldest university in Romania. And if Wikipedia is right, which of course it always is, um, this was founded in 1860. That makes it about 150 years old. Sadly, the university where I go to is much older than 150 years old. This is the oldest university on earth. It's the university of the desert. And disputes have been resolved here for thousands of years. My legacy, I'm just a regular teacher, as you can probably work out, no hair, no money. A lot of, that, that's the result of many years in the teaching profession. But we can all make a difference. You can probably see the connection between that and this. This is what I wanted to do to make a difference. Get young people from different cultures sitting around a fire in a place where there are no distractions, no mobile phone. Uh, I'm Kate, I'm from England, and I'm not a football hooligan. My name is Khaled, and I'm from Saudi Arabia, and I'm not rich. My name is Zahla. My name is Ashima. We are from Oman. And we don't ride camel to go to work. My name is Cody, I'm from the United States. 
I'm not a Christian. I'm Mikolai, I'm from Poland, and I'm not anti-immigration. My name is Tisneem, I'm from Algeria, and I'm not a terrorist. <coughs> I've never been in the Middle East. You like, are they looking at me because I'm not wearing a headscarf? Or are they gonna sell me for 10 camels? <laughs> at first, like, I totally thought that Americans are totally racist about everybody, like, especially the Arabic people. But Jody was just, like, not racist at all. The media has the power to make the, the truth they want. Media is a tool, it's not yeah. to blame. We are I'm going to keep moving on because we're pressed, pressed for time. But that's my contribution. That was my idea 10 years ago due to a letter that I saw in the newspaper. Um, but there are many, many more important and powerful people than me that have great legacies. I'm just going to show you a few examples. Um, let me just whiz back. We've missed a slide there, I think. Maybe not. Um, 1930s, one man thought that things were going wrong with society. He felt that young people were losing their fitness. This is, this is almost a hundred years ago. There was a lack of respect. There was an increasing disease called spectatoritis. In other words, we just watch other people doing things. Uh, number four, there was a, a, a decline in craftsmanship. People just don't care anymore. If it doesn't work, we throw it away. And above all, a decay of compassion. This man had an idea in his head and he, he did something with it. He just didn't just sit down. This man was called Kurt Hahn. He was a German, but he challenged Hitler to the point that he was locked in prison by Hitler. And it was my government in Britain that got him freed and got him to Scotland. And in his life, he just didn't just sit still. He set up four extraordinary organizations, two of whom are active here on your doorstep here in this town. One of them, uh, the International School uh, of Cluj, is part of his legacy. Uh, his legacy is quite extraordinary. 44 years after he died, 1.8 million people benefit from what was in his head. That's an incredible legacy to leave behind. And I wonder, 44 years after you've died, what people will think of you? What contribution did you make to make society uh, a better place? An extraordinary man. One of his main contributions to society was outward bound. In the world today, quarter of a million people do outward bound in one of 32 countries. And you've got one of the most active outward bound schools here in Romania. And last night in this building, we celebrated 25 years. In those 25 years, over 40,000 young people in Romania have benefited from Han's vision. It's all about people. It's not about technology. Technology is important for the future, but the key to prosperity is peace. If you don't have peace, you will not prosper. And Outward Bound in Romania are doing a tremendous job. Founded in 1993, last year alone they delivered 84 courses with over almost 2,500 young people. If you don't know about them, Google them. You'll find them on the website. The classroom is outdoors, and the concept is that we are all capable of far more than we realize. And it's uh, journey-based, starting you on your life journey. So a future unchained really needs leaders, and that's where Outward Bound Romania comes in. Prosperity comes as a result of peace. Peace is a result of good leadership and good governance. And Outward Bound Romania does a fantastic job of creating the next generation of young people in this wonderful country that you live in. I'm going to go back now in my last couple of minutes even further in history. This man was such a radical thinker. And you know you've left a good legacy when they build three statues of you. Not that you'd ever know because you'd be dead. But, of course, this man... This man was an Irish politician and uh, an extraordinary man, Edmund Burke, years ahead of his fellow politicians. A statue of him in Dublin, a statue of him in Washington, D.C. Why? 
because he said things that challenged people's thinking. An extraordinary fellow. And your final challenge, now there are three people in the room who've been to my desert as ambassadors of Romania, so they are not allowed to try this exercise. But my challenge to you before we run out of time is to make sense of those words and to make them into a statement. So you can talk to the person next to you if you want. You've got 10 seconds to try and make sense of those words. Can anyone do it? Put your hand up if you think you can do it. Excellent, go on. Fantastic, well done. Um, see the team from Outward Bound Romania here and they'll give you a special prize later on. Um, but yeah, absolutely right. If you take those words and you put them into sequence, that is what you get. All that is necessary for the triumph of evil is for good people to do nothing. And you are all good people. And the greatest challenge to a future unchained is if you just sit there having your latte with a nice full stomach, checking your iPhone and do nothing. That is the greatest challenge that lays ahead. Thank you very much.